Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop text project, I'll show you how you can set some text on fire like we have in here. It's a fairly straightforward process, nothing really dramatic about this. And it's going to be using an actual flame image which is kind of right there. You can kind of see that if I unlock that and disable that mask. There we go. So it's a flame image. I found this online on a free download site and I have the link for this and other flame images inside of the materials description. So you'll find that over there. And back in again. And then some simple text in here. So there's the there's the text right here. Here's a flame layer with flame on the text and then a flame in behind as well. Again, very straightforward. Let's see how this is done. We'll start off with a new file. There we go. I'll fill this with black. So I have a nice black background. And let's bring in some type. I'm going to set the type here to white just that we have something. You can choose a, a, an orange if you want to make it a little more interesting. We're going to be changing the color using our different layer styles so this is just a reference. We're not actually going to be using that color. And for the text you want to it has just some interest to it. I'm using this old English text. This is standard old English font. You can find those all over the place on the web. If you don't have one just type in old English text or old English font on Google and you get a whole bunch you can download. What makes this work out well is that the text needs to have some detail to it and needs to be reasonably thin. You don't want a real fat typeface for it so it doesn't work as well. You don't want anything real too thin like that or anything too fat. Kind of a mid-tone text to have some interest in it should be okay. So I'll just type in fire. Let me make sure I spell that right of course. So upper lowercase but I think going all uppercase actually gives us more interest on the text itself. Let's scale this text up, edit, transform scale, and get up to pretty good size. There we are. So there's the basic text layout. I'm going to bring in at this point the flame image just to have it in behind. So I'll just drag this down. We're not going to use it yet. I just want to have it in the file. Now let me just minimize that. There it is. There is the flame. And I'm going to get rid of the mask here. So it's just the flame like that. And I'll put that in the background and hide that for the moment. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Okay, so here's our text. We now want to have a dark red glow around this and a different color for the text which we'll do with a satin effect and then an inner glow with a lighter color. All that is done over here with the layer styles. Click on that FX button or layer and layer style. We'll start with our outer glow. There's the default color for that. What we want is a dark red. So click on this. Let's shift this down into the reds and we'll come down to a fairly dark red. It's going to actually go lighter on the image. So you want a fairly dark red to start off with. You go clear to the side over here, you'll have your full saturation and that can help a little bit. So there we go. There's the red, kind of a brick color actually. Technique is softer. And then I can bring the size up and the spread. You can see it in there. I'll go real large. You can see there it is. Yeah, it's just a little bit. You don't want to have too much of this. Just a little bit. I'm, I'm going to do a little more than I normally do so you can see this 
and I probably do a little less than what I'm, what I'm doing here in real for a, you know, a final piece. But I'll, I'll make it a little more evident just for this demonstration. So there we go, just a little bit of a glow outside there. Let's now go over here to Satin, and you can use Satin to fill the text with another color. Right now we're looking at a black Satin. What I want is kind of a, a darker mid-tone orange. Let's stay over here on the right-hand side so we have full vibrancy on that. Looks pretty good. So it's brighter than the background, obviously, uh, but not really too bright. See, it's still a pretty dark color. And then finally, we want to bring in an inner glow. That's right here. Inner glow, you can leave that at the default yellow. You just want to have a light color. And adjust the size of that. There we are. So you get just kind of a nice look, about like that. I think that's pretty good. Okay, that's the first stage. The second stage is you want to mess up the letters a little bit so that it looks as if they're burning or you know deforming with the fire. The third step is actually put the flames onto it. So I'm going to make a copy here of our fire layer. Drag onto the new layer button. We'll hide the original and bring those effects out of the way. We we'll, won't be needing those again. So here's our copy, and we need to distort the letters. We need to rasterize this. So click over here where the name is. Right click and rasterize type. Now that's rasterized, we can come in here and actually mess this up. And I'll be using the smudge tool for this. And just a, a, a little little point there, just a little small brush. doesn't need to be very large. I'm going to choose kind of a midpoint on my hardness. No, not too soft, not too hard. And I'm just going to pull the edges a bit here. I don't want to do too much, just a, just a little bit to, you, you think like you're looking at this through the heat waves. And each, each motion here, I'm, I'm holding the mouse down just for, the, for each motion. I don't want to go so far that it distorts the, the letter and you can't see the letter any longer. But I want to have this little bit of distortion happening on the edge. So it's a hold the mouse and pull and let go, pull and let go. Just kind of messing up the edges a little bit. Now I've seen the same kind of effect done where people were using the liquify filter. And I, I've tried both. I've tried the liquify filter and I've tried using this little smudge tool. I personally prefer the smudge tool. This just, you know, my personal preference. They both work. It's a slightly different effect. I, I like the control that I have with the smudge tool. Notice I have the strength set at 50 up here, so it's it's not smudging too much too quickly. I still can control that. Okay, so there is step two. It is finished with that. And that's all ready to go. We now need to take our flame layer. I'm going to copy this flame layer. Here we go. Bring that above our fire layer. And I'm going to bring the opacity down a bit, about halfway, about 50% or so. Anywhere in there is fine. We're going to be bringing it back up to full opacity later on. So you can see the letters through. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be erasing the letters, you know, the fire in between the letters and leaving the fire effect on the letters and erasing across the bottom. So actually, you know, leaving the fire mostly in the letters, but a little bit of it coming out as well. Before we do that, I want to come in here and mask this out so we have just the flame and none of this black background. We could use the magic wand tool like that. But we're going to have a fairly hard edge. I could bring the tolerance down on this and get a little tighter. But there's another way of doing this. Let's just deselect that. Let's do our selection on our channels. We have several channels here, red, green, blue, and then combined is our RGB. If I click on just the red channel, that's the colors that we really care about, and then click into the black in here on that red channel. 
hit the delete key here and you see that gets rid of that everything that's not red you can see it up in there so that that's the effect but we're going to be doing that selection on the whole channel and not just the red channel but that, that gives you the idea of what we're going to be doing let's just step backwards out of that so there we go so that we're so we're making our selection on the red channel so it gets rid of a lot of stuff down here it's not really quite red okay back to our layers and now we'll delete this hit the delete key and it deletes that let me make sure I'm on the right channel okay I was on the wrong channel there so let me just back up a step edit step backwards let's make sure we're on the RGB channel up here and there's where we want to be back to our layers and then hit the delete key and that cleans out so we have just the fire if I hide that black background you can see it in there and let's just deselect that so make sure that you're on the correct channel obviously when you do your deletion so there's the flame that's what we're seeing and there's the lettering in behind the flame let's bring the opacity of our flame down to about 50 or so so we can see our letters and put a layer mask in here with the layer mask white is show black is hide so let's go up here grab our paintbrush change our color to black and now as I paint in with black it's going to hide the flame now the glow in here that's the outer glow that I left on on purpose and we can adjust that after we get this stage done so I'm just coming here and take out most of the flame that's in between I'm not gonna take out everything I'm gonna leave a little bit of the flame showing and just kind of clean up around the letters so we're leaving flame over the letters pretty much just like that okay let's bring the opacity back up again and there we have flame sitting on top of the letters it's not great yet come up here and choose screen and that will help to blend the flame effect into the letters as you can see there it's not as blending into those those letters the letters look like they are more on fire but still not really totally convincing yet and that's because we need to have some flames across the top but this is all done we're okay down here so go back to our background layer and I'm going to move the background layer around till I have the flames towards the top of our lettering kind of like that and then on this layer we can come in and actually erase out the flames we don't want I'm gonna make a copy of that just to have a protection there we go take the eraser we're on our background layer back there and I'm going to erase the, the flame that isn't coming right off of the letters themselves and I can erase down through here anything which is down here I don't want on this one and anything in between we don't want but anything coming off of the letters themselves we can keep and there we go there is our text on fire and as you can see it's a pretty straightforward process not that much to this it's just knowing the right steps to go through to get the burning text effect I can now come back and adjust the effects in here to make it look a little bit better for instance our outer glow is probably a little too bright and I mentioned that before that I was going to make it brighter so you can see it but I probably bring that down just a little bit so it's not quite as dramatic on the bottom on that outer glow and you can also adjust your opacity in here to control that so at this point it's just a matter of tweaking a little bit back and forth on these different settings your layer style settings and to get just the look that you want but there we go there is text on fire this is a pretty straightforward technique I don't really have any questions or answers on this one there's not that much to talk about only thing that you may want to play around with is your blending modes in here on your top 
flame layer. This is the one that is on top of the letters themselves. I'm just going to click up here and then use my scroll wheel on the mouse and kind of just roll through these different blending modes. And you can see different effects. Sometimes it looks a little more cartoony. Sometimes it's kind of odd looking. But depending upon what it is you're trying to do, you might find that one of these other blending modes works out better for your particular use. If you're going you know, more of a cartoon look, that might be what you're looking for. For a standard look, though, I find you know, overlay is not too bad. I kind of like screen, though. So let's go clear to the top. There's normal. Dissolve is not any good at all. Darken's not too good. Multiply, it's OK. Multiply would work if I came in here and I softened up that bottom edge a little bit. So I could make that work. There's color burn, linear, darker color. Lighten is not too bad. I found screen, for me, really gives the effect that I want to have. Now, if you want to go you know, extra effects on this, you can come in and paint in a few more sparks and things coming off of this. You want to really get in there and make it a lot fancier. You can do that as well. You can even come down onto this flame layer, which is that background layer there, and mask out that layer. Do the same trick we did up here on the red channel. Take out all the black in that layer and then put another layer below that with some smoke effects on it. And get some, actual, some smoke effects in there too. Just something that you can take us, you know, a few steps further if you want to. Okay, so there you go. That's just about everything I have to say about the fire technique. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.